Hello my dudes and welcome back to another episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. However, there has been a bit of disaster on the colony. Oh no! That's right, we've had a couple of fatalities. Kind of unavoidable at this stage because our colony is just so big. But the legend, the demon, Anna Hamilton, died to burning? Now, upon closer inspection, I realized she'd actually walked through some lava that was exposed by our brand new stone smeltery hut. Oh no. Rip in peace. So we have to bid a fond farewell to everybody's favorite courier. She was half Disney princess, half Broadway musical, and 100% hero material. So just to look back, yeah, I think Anna started her life as a guard, and then we kind of moved her to Courier, because her stats were better for that. Or no, was it to split up her and Dr. Potter because they were doing some weird hanky-panky in the mine? I can't remember. Anyway, stuff happened as it does. Life moves on. And what we're going to do this episode is open up with a time-lapse build of the two libraries and our brand new composter hut. So as you can see behind me, we set up three separate builders to work on these buildings at the same time, because I always think it's pretty cool to watch these time-lapse builds happen with multiple builders working on the project. Now, some of these guys were much slower than others. For one, any old thing, our brand new builder was insanely quick at building the composter's hut. I know it's a much simpler building than the libraries, but it's gone up so quick. Also, Nuki was held back a little bit by the fact that he couldn't get a shovel in time. But don't worry, since recording this time lapse, I've gone to the warehouse and made sure there's a stock minimum for iron versions of all the important builder's tools. But you know what? What was truly crazy about this time lapse build is the fact that we got the composter's hut here on the left, all the way up from level one to five, in the time it took us to get these two libraries from levels one to two. Well, no, from level zero to two, really. But it goes to show, some buildings just take a long, long, long time. Some builders are just slower than others, and some styles just take a lot longer to build. Anyway, let's jump in. Oh man, so what a wonderful day for Minecraft. There isn't a better day than Mondays, I think, for Minecraft. Now actually, hang on a sec, how are we gonna get from here to the libraries? Because this big old gap in the industrial district is actually really tricky to traverse. I think we're probably gonna have to teleport over there to the suburbs. The burbs. There we go, yeah, that's probably the quickest way. Wait, where am I? Aha, yeah, here. Now, of course, <laughs> we've still got a serious pig problem going on. Remind me to take care of that at some point, unless it fixes itself, which I don't think it will. So here we go, the true dwarven style, or I think like in the newer versions of Mine Colonies 1.8, it's not called uh, true dwarven anymore, it's called... Oh, something underground, cavern zone, something like that. Honestly, it sounds a bit more like a crystal maze area. Anyway... The library, and these are level two. So, before we set them to level three, what we're gonna do is set manage workers, and of course, set it to automatic hiring, so we can get some students in here on the learn. And of course, give Alyssa the task of getting this up to level three. Whenever you're ready, my darling. And then over to the second library. Now, it made me realize, actually, like, because there's all these elections going on in America, I've thought, hang on a sec, I'm kind of mayor, of New Kingdom, and people don't vote for me, but I feel like I've got to do a good job. And I guess one of the best important jobs of being a good president, prime minister, mayor, chief, king, grand poobah, I think that's a title, is making sure your dudes on the colony have enough jobs. Now, if we're going to get like about 50 more dudes up in this mother trucker, we're going to try and have to generate 50 more jobs. Now, much in the same way we built a skyscraper for the houses and a skyscraper for the courier huts, why not build a skyscraper for libraries? These things stack pretty well, right? They're flat on the bottom, flat on the top, there's no basement to speak of, so we could just put one of these on top of another, on top of another. So that's what we're going to try and do this episode. Plus, also, what we can do is try and cap it off with the cooler Caledonian style. So while these guys are building in the background, let's get to measuring. 
So I have in my backpack now a library block and a build tool. So what we're gonna have to do is go and get now a placeholder block that we can use to measure how tall the library is gonna be. So I'm gonna go over to the warehouse and find out what we've got in stock. Because looking at the crafting remote, I thought we had loads of wool. But no, 600 might seem like a lot, but we'll run out of that pretty quickly because wool is used on a lot of things around the colony. So let's head over to the warehouse and maybe we can uh, work out what we've got spare. Now here and there, I've done some tidying up. You can see here we've removed the kind of ugly area right here and I replaced it with like just some wood, some cobblestone, some stairs. This basic retention wall effect that we've had. Go oh, wait, hang on a sec. That's not symmetrical. There we go, mischief managed. Ho <laughs> ho Almost had an unsymmetrical building wall. Can't have that, not a new kingdom. So yeah, basically what we want to do is find out what we have too much of in our warehouse. And on the warehouse screen, this cool button in the top right gives us exactly that. But what we want to know is what we have too much of. So we want to look for, I guess, quantities. And this is quantities. Pots is what we have the least of. And, whoa, oh my god. Oh my god, what the hell is tallow? Oh, you know what it is. Tallow is from killing pigs. Why is there 9,000? We've got 9,000 tallow. That's about 9,000 too much. 15,000 cobbled deep slate. That's totally useless. We've got a whole bunch of weirdness. Oh my god, we've got so much of it. Look at this. It's in like several different cubes. There's 3,000 in here. Oh, wart ladder. Where have we got some wart ladder from? Oh, yeah. 30 in uh, here. Oh, no. some lava buckets. Yeah, well, anyway, it's going to make a great placeholder block, so let's just use that. So off we go. Now, what we want to measure is just how big a level 5 true dwarven library is going to be. Each one is going to get us 8 slots to employ people as students. Actually, now let's go and run the numbers right now, because we can work this out quite mathematically. So here we go. Citizen information. We have 160 dudes. Possible. And unemployed, we have 18. Okay. We've got three gaps, so we're really going to have, I guess, three on top of 18. That's 21 unemployed. Plus the extra 40 for when we get 200 dudes. That's going to make, hmm, wait, no way. 60, 61 unemployed dudes? That's a lot of dudes. Now, we don't have to have every single person employed on the colony. Some people can be, you know, slackers. So if we aim to get like roughly half of that 60 employed, I reckon we're in a good position. And that's what, eight people per level five library. Oh man, look at this, it's already going up to level two. Oh man, these guys are working quick. Loving it, love that energy. Oh wait, now hang on a sec, speaking of jobs, we never hired somebody in this composter. Let's get somebody in here, stats. So who's it gonna be? Composters Hut number five, manage workers, and let's see who has the best stats for the job. Stamina and athletics. So here we go, intelligence 40, stamina 25, athletics 11, spinny wolf dragon, you are our new composter. I hope you love trawling through poo. Let's get him over here, see what he looks like. Oh yeah, looks like he's uh, had a life of uh, trawling through poo. Oh, looks like a bit of sips going on upstairs, Never mind. Anyway, that's the composter taken care of. Now, oh my god, yeah, these are almost finished. What amazingly quick work. So I reckon this area right here next to these other libraries is the perfect spot for our library tower. It's away from the railway track, so we're not going to go into that. These trees we can kind of get rid of, and we can put more down so it looks nicer. But yeah, basically what we'll do is we'll put the library tower here, and what this means is we'll be able to call this, I guess, like the library district. So we've got two here, and I reckon if we have... Oh, you know what? We can have actually two opposite each other and then have the ones on this side be too high. Does that sound good? Yeah, I reckon that sounds good. So that would give us one, two, three, four extra libraries on top of these two here. And four times eight is what? 32? Yeah, that sounds like half of 60 to me. Okay, perfect. So we're going to put four libraries here. But before we do go and make those library blocks, what I'm going to do is see if the Caledonian style will fit quite neatly on top of this other library. So Caledonia, level 5. And let's take a look. Now I think the Caledonian style is going to be way too big, to be honest. So what's very cool about the um, 
true dwarven style is you see these blocks up here, these yellow blocks. Well, these are placeholder blocks that mean leave whatever's there and don't dig it. And these are in like kind of like a stalactite pattern. So it means like when you build this thing underground, you get these cool spiky rock formations above that make the area look even more like a cavern. Ah, uh, yeah, now like I feared, the Caledonian building doesn't really fit on top of this library. It's gonna look way janky, even if you put it over the edge, it's just way too big. Oh my god, there we go, boom, library complete. So let's measure the size of the true Dwarven level 5 library. Oh, now we do have a slight problem, there's a bit of a weird lip that goes on at the bottom of the build. That means we can't really stack these properly. Oh man, so unfortunately what this lip means is we can't really properly stack this library on top of each other. Yeah, every single style of library is just unfortunately way too big to go on top of this true Dwarven. Man, some of these are colossal. Oh wait, hang on a sec, Space Wars might fit, but it's just way too futuristic for our colony. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for the quad library effect. Now the door is on the left side over here, whereas on this building it's well, it's, it's on the left side, but that means it's not symmetrical. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the flip-o button. The flip-o button. That's a button, right? Yeah, we'll call it the flip-o button. Uh, yeah, and that means we'll get it on the other side. Yeah, here we go. So this will be perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, you know what? That's a perfect fit. Now, it looks pretty ugly because it's half underground, but let's go and make sure that this doesn't kind of, you know, trample on any other buildings. It's far enough away from the engineer's hut. Perfect. We'll have to neaten this area up a bit. But you know what? That's a perfect fit. Amazing. Well, let's pull the trigger and uh, get that going. And we're going to need to get another library block as well and put another one over here. Now, I think, yeah, four libraries sounds a bit more sensible than a whole tower of like 20. And so there we go. Two more libraries in position. So we've got Alyssa and any old thing working on these two libraries. And now let's assign these other libraries to the remaining builders. So we've got, where is he? Where is this rude mother truck and dude? Nuki Slayer of Burritos, Nuki Slayer of Buildings, more like. Boom. Now the other library over here, it's gonna be a bit tricky to find, but since we put this down symmetrically, if we dig in this direction, we probably should find it, right? Oh, there we go, library, boom. This way. Can't be bothered to get a shovel right now. And we're pretty close, so it shouldn't be a big issue. Oh, you know what? I can't see a thing. There we go. Much better. And there we go. He did the math. And it's in the correct position. Library, build options. And who's the last guy? Uh, Booga. That's right. Booga gets a building. Oh, no, now we're in trouble here. Look at this. I forgot. This guy's going to have to dig for ages. Now, even though we've put all the research in to get the builder's dig speed up massively, and we've done loads, like citizen block break speed now, is insane. Still, this guy is a really slow digger. And it's not the tool. Like, even if we give him, like, a diamond shovel, he still takes freaking ages to do this. So it's only fair that we're good mayors, and we make ourselves, I guess, a diamond shovel, and help out. So here we go, dig, dig, chop, chop. I am the mayor and I'm digging the ground. Diggy, diggy ground. Diggy, diggy ground. Hey, I'm a politician, not a lyrical genius. Yeah, I know who you are, so come here, champ. I've got a gift. Oh God, no, not that. Men gotta do what men gotta do. Oh, he's already got a diamond pick, so we'll give him the diamond shovel. That's a bit of an upgrade. Also, all of this digging is sweaty work that I'm really not into. So I started going back to the gym recently. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've taken a big long break from the gym, basically because when I got a puppy, when I got a dog, it just felt really cruel to keep leaving him at home or leaving her at home while I went to the gym getting massive gains. But now she's older. She's what, like eight months now, seven, eight months old. So we can leave her at home now and she's pretty much OK. But, oh man, my bones are aching. I've done too much hard work already this weekend, so I don't want to dig in Minecraft as well. Anyway, while we're out and about, there's a couple of orders of business to take care of. Number one is, well, we have a couple of Patreon members to get into the colony. Some new names for some new dudes. 
So let's grab some name tags. So number one is Derpius Butterworth. Thank you very much for becoming a Patreon member. And number two is an old Patreon who says he never actually got his name in the colony. And it's Olaf. And I can't remember, but I think he might be right. I don't think we've ever had an Olaf in the colony. So that's what we're doing. Wait, or was it Olaf? Ooh, tricky. No, I think it was Olaf. There we go. And there we go, we got three slots, so let's go to the tavern and recruit some dudes. Now this is where it gets a little bit controversial, because we might hire a guy, and that Patreon guy is going to be like, Oh man, yeah, that's me, I'm in. And then we're like, oh, alright, cool, and now we're going to rename him. And then you're like, oh man. oh man, what a slap in the face. What an absolute kick in the nether regions. So one of you guys in the comment section, I think it was Kapil Sinker, said, why don't you just go to the school and use the name tag on students there? That way you're guaranteed to get a new member who's been born, not someone you recruited from the tavern, and it's just probably a better way going forward. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over to the school and see if there are any children over here that we can, you know, name tag. Oh, hang on. Oh no, I think school's out. Why is school out? Wait, oh my God, has this... Has this raccoon been stealing glass? Where are the kids? Maybe we don't have any children. Maybe they all grew up. Oh, I think they must have all grown up. Well, never mind. It was a good idea. So what we'll do instead is just get a couple of unemployed dudes. Here we go. And ones that kind of have the same name. So here we go. There's a lot of your moms. So we're going to get your mom the. And ooh, diamond armor. Right away. Congratulations. You've been promoted to Derpius Butterworth. And Reggie the, you're going to be renamed to the wonderful name of Olaf. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Everybody's favorite frozen snowman. So that's citizens renamed to Patreon dudes. We've got the libraries and the construction over there. Let's go and check on the research, see how that's going. Okay, so we have four or five research in progress. And yeah, this is all just ticking along very slowly because all the research we're doing takes freaking forever. We do have one slot though, one open slot for research. So what do we reckon it's going to be? Let's have a look. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? It's going to be citizen happiness. I forgot about this. We were going to do this last episode. That's why I have cakes in my bag. So we're looking for 18 of these bad boys to get happiness up by 5%. Now, I think we went to the post box over here and requested cakes. So have they arrived? Well, they have indeed. So one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and one to spare. So down the civvy tree and spectacle, boom, there we go. The other researchers, I think, are, are they in combat? Are we doing combat research? No, or oh, it must be tech then. How's it going? Ooh, well, it's roughly halfway, so another four hours IRL to go. Oh man, that's crazy, it's crazy how long research takes, but we're getting so close now to the end. Almost all of our buildings are level 5, and we're almost at 200 dudes. I'm not quite sure why we chose the number 200, and why that's important to us, but I guess it just is, isn't it? Anyway, let's take this waystone of the fields down to the catacombs, or the caverns, and see how things are going on down here. Oh yeah, it looks like we're getting a whole village emerging down here in the background. Oh, now it looks like uh, the houses we put down the bottom have put down some grass, but you know what? I think this underground grass looks kind of good. Now somebody in the comment section, unnamed hero, said you should put glowstone in the roof of the caverns to make it look all sparkly and new. And you know what? I think it's kind of a good look. So while we're down here, let's just do a quick pass of all the houses right click on them and get them building again because I think I kind of put them on pause while I was doing the library and the composter. And so there we go, those homes are going to sizzle away in the background and hopefully next time we come down here they'll be up another level. But this is all great housing and it looks like, yeah, we're going to get like a load more dudes in our colony from this space. But it does make me realise actually there's a whole bunch of houses up on the top level, up around our colony, that are still only level four. And yeah, I'm with you, that's a scandal. So let's take a look at which ones I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right, here in the suburbs, all of these houses are still level four. They're not level five. In fact, I don't think we have a single level five house in the entire colony.
Yeah, look at this, house level four. Even all of the houses in our skyscraper, Jenga Heights, are level four at most. None of them are level five. So what I think I'm gonna do between this episode and next is make sure all of our houses are queued up at least to get all the way to level five. And maybe we can do a time-lapse of the suburb section as they go up. So there we go, my dudes. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. This episode, we got some solid foundations built and uh, yeah, we're well on the way to building completely the library district. And what I'm going to need, actually, is a name for the library district, like the information quarter, the library district, the book zone. If you guys have got any interesting ideas about what kind of name we could give the district that's got loads of libraries in it, put it in the comment section, if you please. A massive thank you to my Patreon dudes, and whenever you guys do subscribe, I do try and get you in the colony. But of course, your support is amazing. And what I'm going to try and do this week is get back to doing some more vlogs and weekly updates because I've really neglected those. If I'm being honest, having a dog and a puppy, life has got so busy with house renovations, a puppy, work. So my mental load and my mental health hasn't been 100%, but things are kind of calming down and we're getting back into it. So I'm looking forward to trying to find ways to inject more value to being a Patreon member. Anyway, oh, hello, how's it going, dude? A massive thank you to you guys. And until next time, take care.